I decided to, after looking at the painting, that it needed to have some softened areas. So I have used acrylic glazing liquid. I really like this from Golden Mediums. I don't know other brands, I'm sure they're good. And what I did is to use a big brush and just place it on the sky because I think the sky needs to have a little more softness to it. So I am going to use now a blue. That's going to be for this particular area. As you can see, there's still some glazing. I hope it's not too shiny uh, for you and that you can still see what I'm doing uh, with the colors. Sorry about the glare. There's really not much I can do. So I hope this is gonna work for you. So what I have there is just a glazing media on top of the dried already dried area of color. And I'm going to use this blue, which is ultramarine blue with, uh, with white. As you can see, it's matching pretty much what I had before, ultramarine blue with white. And I'm going to just gently and softly brush it on top of the glazing media. The glazing allows a sort of a transparent layer on top of what we had before. And I like the transparency, working with transparency, but since I've already made layers here, it's really hard to keep the transparent uh, glazes or paints that I had before. So I'm trying this transparent all together here. Now for the cloud area, I have created sort of a murky purple. This is gonna be the, the darkest area in, in this particular cloud. This cloud was too big, so I'm going to make it a bit smaller. And in some areas here, there's a hint of, of clouds. The other, a little bit of the dark area is over here. Now this here is going to be lighter. I had made it too dark. So let's see if we can use the glazing medium to help improve that. So it's time. And as you can see, it's a larger brush. I was having a bit of trouble yesterday, so wipe it. And this has a little bit of glazing medium, which is the same as, as having acrylic. It's all acrylic based. I use Golden Brand. You can use any other brand. I just recommend you use uh, artist grade, not student grade, because I've used student grade in the past. When we start, we try to go for you know, a lot of colors, you know, 64 colors is better than four. And we try to go for more affordable. But at the end, it's more affordable to have the high quality that lasts for a long time. I'm making a light pinkish color that I want to just gently brush in some of these areas of where the clouds were. So as you can see, I am sort of following what I had before, but I'm making... I'm <clears throat> wanting to make this particular painting sky a bit softer than what it was. And let's hope that, that it works. I'm going to see. I think that just by... It's a light touch and I have more paint on the side that I'm not brushing than the side that I'm brushing with. And that's on purpose. So what I'm going to do is just move that paint a little bit uh, with a little bit more like opening the hairs of the brush and then I am just uh, making just tiny tiny brush strokes here. It definitely needed to be you know a bit lighter in, in the bottom which is what I had before. So with the clean brush nothing else. I'm just going to try to dilute this a bit. I hope you can see without too much glare. What I am doing here is just trying to establish a more gentle, dramatic sky, but more gentle. And the glazing medium allows me to move the paint easier on, on this canvas. Now this had more of the lighter blue color. So with this clean uh, brush, I am just gonna go 
to a as you remember we had this viridian green and this viridian green is probably a bit too dark but i am just going to try to brush it lightly here that wasn't very light but anyway and i'm going to mix it with the other blue as you can see it's not very hard to mix with the other blue if we have like a dark cloud like in this case having around the dark cloud some elements of bright color in the sky are very helpful so what i'm going to do now i'm sorry that i'm banging on it's a bit uncomfortable but okay we have the rag and i'm trying to clean this just a little bit because i'm going to dip into the other blue that i had before and this other blue that i had before i'm just gonna mix it gently with with the green. I think the glazing medium is making it feel more like um, oil color and it's just easier <clears throat> for me to blend these shapes or color areas, pieces of color they, they sometimes call it. <clears throat> okay, so now uh, in here we get an area that's actually sort of the lighter blue so what I'm going to do is take some white into the blue that I was using here. And just in here, it should be bluer. Now, the problem that I faced yesterday when I started this painting that I posted. So if you haven't seen it and you want to watch how I developed the original painting, uh, you will understand what I'm talking about. Um, if you have... I mean, if you go and see it, if you haven't seen it, I was having trouble because these paints were like all acrylic paints, and I know that, dry, darker. But I was trying to match colors that were already dried in my painting, and that was the problem that I was encountering, was that I was trying to match colors uh, to the color that I saw after it had dried. And of course, dries darker. So I'm making just a lighter color of the green that I used here for this area. Again, this did look more as, as this one here is. It was like a turquoise color. So I just want to brush it slightly in here and just insinuate that there were some clouds also in, in the bottom, in the horizon. So I think this is now getting softer area of the clouds, which is what I wanted to achieve. And just, I think this area needs a little bit of work. Probably I had too much glazing medium, but that's fine. There was another area of that uh, sort of turquoise color, not completely turquoise. So I'm mixing it with a little bit of the blue in here because this area was not as yellow. Um, it was lighter, but it was not as yellow. And definitely uh, there was no cloud in there. So what I'm going to do now is wipe the brush. And of course, I got a dirty rag with a with a glazing medium. It means that the dirty stuff was already was was still wet. The glazing medium allows to have more time for the paint to be still workable, so being wet. And that they call that uh, opening the acrylic now. The Golden has a brand that's called Open Acrylics that do have already that sort of retarder in there. Okay, remember this big brush uh, where I had the pink? Well, I'm going to introduce a kind of more yellow, more orangey color for this particular area here. 
this might be too dark that's that's fine for now i am going to add white to it and just try to blend it with so it's not white white but it's more of a yellow color in here and let's try to see if we can make some sort of a blending when we are blending here it's tricky because this is sort of turquoise and the other one being yellow we can make it green and I don't think I want to have a completely green sky but let's see how I do and definitely this area was a lighter area so that the contrast so you can see that by using this large brush I really don't have much control of of where the paint is going but it's allowing me to get areas of light and areas of, of dark more gently brushed in than what I had yesterday. The areas were already dry and it was really hard to create this sort of light effect in the sky. So I am just trying to get some of these areas to have some color harmony. So we have not completely mixed but as you can see brushing it gently it does help to create i think it's a softer sky than what we had yesterday and we still need to make probably some area here the pink color helps into that yellow and, and blue i think it's too light so what I'm going to do is use the other brush and just bring a bit of that blue in here. So around this cloud, this was the darkest cloud, but it wasn't really that big because it's really far away in the, in the horizon or in the sky, I should say. And so I think it was way too much. And, and it's nice to have a fluffy feeling to the clouds. So I'm using the more pinkish violet in here on this area of this cloud and just brushing it like it's going up and then it has like a belly. And then around it, I am going to use the same brush but I am going to use the light blue that we could see. It's probably too light. So just because I have the different piles, we can actually just put, put the brush in the different piles. And with this glazing media, I'm finding it really very, very nice. It's like buttering with melted butter. Um, so I'm finding it easier with a light touch to to mix the colors or to apply the colors without them feeling that uh, I was fighting with with the canvas so again if you haven't seen uh, the first part where I developed this it's in three parts but the second part is just a few seconds because I didn't have much in terms of my the the, the iPhone I had a problem so it's just a few seconds but I would say it's basically in two parts. So you haven't seen it, um, you can watch it. You can watch it in high speed uh, so that you, go, you don't get that desperate. Now that you know that I am getting a result that looks like a painting, you might want to watch uh, all of the troubles I had creating it. So I'm just adding pieces of lighter color and I'm going slower than yesterday in terms of changing the lights and the darks. I think yesterday uh, it was drying so quickly that I was a bit desperate for um, applying the color quicker. I'm going back to that blue that has with a little bit of 
of white. I just want to have some areas in here where we can see some of the sky peeking through those clouds and that sky is sort of forming around the this shape let's say of of these clouds in the sky so this is an area that's difficult because it has to be soft very very soft but um it also is a dark area of the cloud so i think i'm going to have to use the brush in a different way and i'm i have the lighter color here so with this light color i'm just making sort of a a gray area for this particular cloud it is still big so we can make it smaller once it dries a little bit in this area here i can i don't know if you see a glare i am seeing a glare so it's it's probably the glazing medium and it's making it a bit hard for me to understand what colors are going to show but um, that's fine it's it's the edge of the canvas and this particular clouds should not really be that prominent but they will have more of these um, lining that you see in the sky i think this particular area is looking better the other area i need to fix is this area in the back um, i think it was still too dark and i think it needs to be a bit more purple so i am using the same color of the sky uh, i did have this kind of purple color of the sky but i am going to add white to it so that i make it a little lighter but not as light as the horizon line of. I think that might be a bit too light. So I can go back and mix with the previous mix that I had for this guy. I think it's still too light. Okay, so I have this other darker area that I use for this cloud and I am just gonna use it yeah, for, for this area here. And just brush it. It will dry darker, but it does have to be lighter than this and a little darker than the horizon which is working well especially on this end it was a bit lighter so I just want to make sure that this end has a lighter feeling on, on the horizon and the horizon line of course with with water has to be as straight as possible. I realized that I made this pylon crooked also. Um, I mean, they can be bent, but I just don't like the fact that this was almost the same as this one. So when I was looking at the painting, I think I'm just going to make this a straight one and we will correct this straight line with, with a darker color. So I think for the horizon line, that's going to look a little better, more, more gentle than what we had before. Um, it was a bit too dark. Okay, now this has to be a straight line because it's a building. I mean, it's shaping the building so we can establish a little bit better that uh, mm -hmm. building there soon. I will get to the darker area that we need to correct the perspective here is wrong because this wall is a bit bigger so it will come like from here to here the angle was correct but what was not correct was that it should be bigger and so we are seeing the perspective of this it's almost like we're flying over and it, we should be seeing less of this courtyard so 
it's a minor, it's really just millimeters, but it will make a difference. I think the sky is looking better the way that I want it to look. Eventually, I'm going to place a bit more of the lights in here, but I want them to dry a little bit. But there was one thing, is this bright color should be reflected somehow on the water and I was missing that yesterday. So let's use the brush that I had with blue. Let's just uh, wipe it. Wipe it again. And I hope that uh, these videos are useful for you, especially if you are having trouble. Don't give up. Um, in general, in life, it's not a bad idea to always try to fix. If you have something that definitely you don't think it's going to work and it's making you upset, just, you know, it's just a canvas and paint. So just start another one, but learn from what didn't go right. I just thought this one would be salvaged if I tried to work on the layers on top. There's always different ways of of trying to salvage and do these things. So what I'm going to do now is to use the same sort of a yellowish, pinkish color that we have with a bit more of white and just brush it uh, gently here. So there is a point in here with, that has more of that yellow tint to the water. This is one advantage of acrylics in terms of comparing them to oils. And that is the ability of painting yellow on blue when you have sunsets or sunrises um, on the water because with oils, it's a bit frustrating because you start painting and instead of yellow highlights on the blue on, on the blue sea or the blue water, you start having a mix of the yellow and blue and you start having trouble because it just all looks green. So it's one of the advantages. I'm just gently making this a bit lighter. As you saw, I just added white to that area of the of the horizon and I'm just getting this hint of the yellow trickling down so that the color does make sense uh, in terms of you know we're having this this gorgeous sunset here and all of a sudden the, the water was completely blue and there was no sort of continuity with the painting. So I think this water is now reading better and using that same whitish color and yellow, I probably a little bit more white. I want a bright yellow spot on, on the sky. It was, it was a reflection of the sunset that's to the right and behind. It's almost really to the right of me. And that sunlight was just hitting the sky and the clouds in the sky. So the sunset is not occurring here, but there were these gorgeous reflections of sky. And, and the brightest area I want to make it around this particular pylon. So I just put tiny bit of cadmium yellow into the white and then there's areas of bright bright yellow which are just you know don't don't make too many but just a few especially a few around the areas of dark uh, do produce a better feeling of of the light hitting and and i did see this nice reflection that i'm going to work on by now 
sort of cleaning the brush slightly and just using this. Sometimes you can use your fingers to blend it. And as you can see, the glazing medium already dried. So I just used my finger with a little bit of water. And let's see if I didn't make a mistake there. So <clears throat> yeah, some people use their fingers to blend. Um, just when you are using acrylics, make sure that they are non-toxic. Not all colors are AP, non-toxic. So it depends on the colors that you choose. Uh, be careful if you are using your fingers, not to be blending with your fingers and then touching your face or preparing food or anything like that if you don't have AP colors, um, safe colors. I'm using a bit of these turquoise. Maybe I'll add just a tiny bit more of the white and blue that I had from the sky. So it's not as turquoise, but it's still a, a little turquoise color because there was like a an, an area here where the sky was more greenish. And then bit of this also around this area in the sky. So when you are working with the acrylics, with this glazing medium, um, because it's not dry, it's very similar to oils. If you don't paint in oils, then it's, it's hard for you to understand what we say when we're saying more similar to oils. So with acrylics, normally it's dry, you can paint on top of the, of the color that you have. But with the acrylic that it's still open, that it's still wet, if I want to paint this and just make it a gentle, softer transition, I just go towards the place where I have from the light to the dark, and then I wipe my brush and do the same. Don't do like this because then you bring the dark towards the light. And in that particular area, I sort of wanted to have this cleaner, nicer color of sky. Now, closer to the edge, it was lighter. So I just put a bunch of white and I am sort of gently mixing it with the blue. Very, very gentle touch. And then I'm gonna wipe the brush, not completely clean it because what I want to do is to sort of work on the blending of these two. So I still have some of my mix, my, my blue mix. And this one here, I'm just going to try to blend with the greenish color. So you can use different sort of brush strokes or movements. You can go round or you can go vertical and horizontal. Some people like to do the crisscross. Um, again, I'm having a glare, so I'm just hoping that you can see the sort of the blending of these colors and I'm actually being able to blend these colors nicely because there's glazing medium in there. Okay so this one this area here is a little lighter a little lighter but still you know it's the blue color with a tiny 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 bit of the viridian uh, green color here. And, and you know, the sky, it's, it's good that we're having, you know, different colors, but I just wanted to make 
you know, this, this area, this whole area a bit gentler than I had it. So now we can go back and placing just very tiny pieces of bright areas in, in here from, from these particular clouds. And as you can see, this is called dry brushing. So I'm using the colors that I had. This was the, the one that had more of the yellow, but I'm now I am adding a bit more of the one that has the pink. And you know, this dry brushing is just sort of a, a statement that's helping provide some other areas that were being hit with light in, in the clouds. Not too many, but it's just sort of placing them in different areas. And like you see, with a big brush, I am keeping myself from the temptation of drawing or, or painting many details. I want to make uh, this particular area a little bit pinkier. So same, same, you know, yeah, it's a bit pinkier. I don't know if you, you can see that. So it's just a very light, uh, you know, close to where the yellow is. So it's, it's not all bright, bright yellowish color. So that's giving better impression of the the lights that that I was seeing and making the clouds look slightly more gentle but you know they were big clouds but it's a big area of of canvas and and I think I just underestimated the size of the canvas compared to the size that I was painting these clouds so that wasn't working okay I think I think that's it for the sky so what we've done is reestablish first of all softening the area on the top of the sky making it more gentle um, making some of these clouds just wispy uh, kissing on the canvas and then what I did was to work on the darkening of the well, the dark area of some of these clouds, just making sure that they are reestablished, but uh, they're not as dark as you think, um, because I think they were too dark before. So I had two purples, one more with blue, one more with um, the alizarin and crimson, and I used them in layers in here. So more alizarin clear, more blue here. I hope you can see it. And bluer as it goes a little bit farther. All right, so now uh, what I want to do before I move on to the dark areas is I have, uh, you know, I think these oranges need to be softened. So what I did was to use the blue in this brush, the blue that I had, just to soften a bit some of these areas. And of course, the, it was deposited, the paint was deposited with a big brush. I was not really controlling much of it, which is what I wanted. Uh, but some of them looked a bit, a bit too rough. I think this works better. And of course we do have a hint. So I'm just gonna use a little, little bit of the pinkish color with the blue just here. Because there, there are some in there and it's gonna dry darker. So um, that's probably a bit, a bit too light. So what I'm doing is just going over my pile of the purple. I'm going to use the one that's a little bit more of the alizarin crimson here. And just, um, yeah, I think this, this color is going to probably work better as, you know, hints of this cloud in here. Yep. And I think by having more of this pinkish color 
um, makes it look more like the reflection. There's one thing that I want to do. I am cleaning my brush. Um, I'm doing some of this cleaning off camera because I've shown you already that I wipe the excess paint and then I dunk off camera in water, have several buckets, and then the brush comes out pretty clean. So <clears throat> this area is too white and I am not sure we can darken that, if we should darken that a little bit. But what I want to do with a clean brush right now is go into the very dark. Now it's no white. That's why when you are going to paint dark colors, they are transparent. Just a little bit of white in your brush is gonna make a mess. So this is basically ultramarine blue and a laser in crimson. The proportions are really up to you and they are up to uh, the quality of your paints. Sometimes your crimson might be more potent than your <clears throat> than your ultramarine blue. So we need to increase the height of this area. It needs to go probably this high and all the way here. So it's a straight line. The, per the, the perspective was correct in terms of the line perspective, but what was wrong was that we were seeing too much of that boat yard, of the floor of the boat, boat, boat yard. And that's that was creating a slight, in my mind, a slight problem. Now, this wasn't really super, super dark, because I guess there was a bit of a reflection. But what, what was interesting is that this particular line of, I don't know, it was like interrupted planks in there. It did go higher than the wall and behind the wall. So the perspective of that particular courtyard goes flatter, okay? And this was definitely lower as I have it, um, but this should be a little bit more straight. Yeah, okay. So sometimes these small line corrections uh, make a big difference in your painting. And in my case, sometimes I don't see the problem until I step back and I see the painting. And when I do these demos, I cannot pause my taping. I don't know how to do it. I have to stop it. And these demos are supposed to be short. And so I don't have a chance to step back and look at them. So that's why it's good to show you how you can fix some, some drawing. I mean, you need, it's better if you have the drawing correct from the beginning. I am correct in this pylon, which I mentioned had shown like it was not straight down. And it had sort of the same inclination as this one. I didn't like that. Okay, and then it had like a little cover like that, like a little top thing like that. All right, so again, establish this back again. I am going to use just a bit of the alizarin crimson here because alizarin crimson, it's a nice transparent color that brings things closer than the ultramarine blue. And I sort of like to have this wall with a little hint of that, you know, warm red, reddish color here. Okay, that has fixed most of the issues that I had with the painting. In my mind, this looks like a better painting, nicer painting. The, 
I was okay with the water here. I think probably there were too many um, water splashes in here. I think I did too many. So with a dark, more of a blue, I can just uh, go on top and get get rid of some of some of these. And some of that reddish color. I think it was too much and that's a problem. I'm not very good at making things up. I need to copy and these splashes were actually not in the in the photo. <laughs> so I just made them up to to tell the viewer that these wall ends and then the reflection starts. That's that was my intention to try to explain visually what they were seeing. Okay. I think the painting is now a better painting what did we do we corrected the sky we used glazing medium which made a big difference if you see my other videos on this same painting you'll see the difficulties i was having painting on the linen panel and trying to mix the darker ultramarine blue which is a reddish blue moving into a turquoise blue which is a yellowish blue or a greenish blue and I was having a lot of trouble. I think this has been fixed. I made the clouds slightly more gentle instead of blobs of paint. I think it looks better. This area is definitely the area that was getting hit with more intense color. I got rid of a cloud that was here. This had more of the sky. I don't wanna touch it more because I think it makes a good impression and then just touches of light where is the lightest light against this pylon that was something that really caught my attention on this one here so I think it's uh, one of the focal points of the painting and then it's solving this area the white for some reason I think the white is too white so we can make it either yellowish or we could paint it a bit more on the blue side and I think because the rooftop is green so you can see it's green here and violet on the side of the shadow so the shadows are violet because I have this mix of this yellow let's let's venture and just just slight I think this is going to show more that this is getting the light. I mean, it was showing it before, but I think white was too much. Uh, white uh, for light impressions is is actually showing a lot when it's like a very bright summer or very bright sunlight, and especially white, white, white against dark but for all the others a golden golden accent works better I, I think this looks better uh, than than the clear white of course if you want to paint something like this it's your painting you can make it different you can make it a, another color you can make it white like I had it so there's just some hints of of light that tells us the light's coming from the left and although I don't see that in the painting I think we should be seeing some some light um, hitting and maybe on on this corner I mean I don't know if I'm gonna be messing it up but I think that on this area, I could be getting some of the dark shadows, but we are calling it a day. I think the painting is done. I'm just going to soften this light reflection and this one. Just water, pass it through. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Please watch my other uh, videos and I have several different examples. This was challenging, so I 
I actually invite you to watch it. It ended up, I think I, I like it a lot. I'm painting with natural light and I hope you can see the colors in the painting uh, correctly with this natural light, better than having artificial yellowish light. Well, see you in the next video. Thank you.